覚えました感じねえ。なんじゃお主たちか。家事をするんじゃな。するのじゃ。
備を変えるのかよ<音楽>さてさて何のご用かのマイドアリーはあ、えー、どこにしまったかなあなになにはあはあさてもうひと眠り。もよろしく頼むぞ。よいぞ。
何にするのじゃが足りのようじゃなんにするのじゃともよろしく頼むぞ。うん。あ、お客さん。えっと、なんだっけ。なになに。夕方まででいいの。なになに。なんだっけ。えー、どこにしまったかな。
What? ありがとうございます。Uh, that was a navigational puzzle and a half. Turns out I was already at the end, huh? That's good at least. Nope. That's motherfucking endgame bullshittery. No way I'm dealing with that. I'm going home. Fuck that shit, I'm out.
いらっしゃいしっかりねいらっしゃいまたおいでなにかようかあ,あふん見事だ登録か見事だとうか見事だとうかそれでは。I'm still struggling with coming up with a main team. <laughs> I think that's kind of a flaw with having this many classes to choose from. The same problem with Ultimate having so many characters. It's very hard to pick a main, although nowadays, when in doubt, it's usually like Steve or, or Pyra slash Mithra nowadays. Those two dominate the meta, as far as I am aware. Maybe I can go for E instead of Rama. A while st until we get these, then they'll be, then they'll be good to pair. But only Melly. Right now, my focus is actually just on TP efficiency. Honestly, Rhyme uh, would still be a good choice, honestly. Better damage, at the very least.
Teosra still suffers from the same problem. She's a nuke. Who's useless for most of the battle. For most battles, unless you... We still don't have access to Amritas. Why not? Although I don't have a bashing weapon type character anymore. Maybe it'll be Mara. So I like having more TP with Liana. Oh, I can't use any bashing weapons. Our hammer sounds good. Got Vit. How do I get my hands on it?
何にするのじゃをするんじゃな毎度あり<笑>いらっしゃい何にするのじゃ Sharp stinger like hard wood. Army wasp. Hi. Hello, hello. Here's how this works. I want you to hit me. Ah! There are now two sheep. And now there are four sheep. <laughs> and now, oh god! Oh no, okay, okay, I think that's good for now. Oh, all the ones over here? No, two, wait, what's the range on this? Uh, it's like all of the ones that are, like, nearby. <laughs> okay. I guess we can go and do stuff. Sorry, can you talk a little louder? All the sheep oh, are kind of... Yeah. Uh, I, we should probably try and get some tools. Yeah, alright, let's do it. Okay, let's go. I got this for you, get that one. 
Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm going to show you something. Though. I'm going to teach you about uh, Minecraft oh, rules. Uh, don't dig down. Okay. Well, there's and one of everything. We're going to find out why. So we're going to dig them down right here for no reason in okay. particular. All right, I can do that. I'm hearing a lot of noises. A lot of noises? Why might that be the case? <laughs> why? Oh, oh, this is okay. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. This is my guy. they were doing this guy. I don't know what. You you generally just don't think that was the, the joke. Oh, God. Um, oh, there's so many sheep out here now, too. I'm going to just get back up to the surface really quick. I'll see you in a sec. There are so many sheep. Oh, my. Wow, there are a lot of sheep. So, what I'm thinking is maybe once we've sort of set up with the basics and moved to a different area, but it's kind of our farmland and come back to whatever we need a couple thousand sheep. That sounds good to me, yeah. I think I think that is a, a good plan that we should come, that we should leave. It's, it's, I, my frame is, if I look at the sheep, it goes down to like 30 FPS. So, we're, we're not clear if the Ender Dragon will duplicate, right? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I have not looked at that part. Okay, sorry, there might be a couple spiders joining Yeah, us. no, that's okay. It's, it's fine, yep. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah, just a few. <laughs> there might be a couple. Uh, no, wait, maybe we should... Uh, <laughs> let's go, let's go. Oh, I don't know what you're trying to say. There's a couple of the first one. Oh, my God. Just keep running. We got the genie side here. We're gonna have so much iron by the end of this. We're gonna have to. We're gonna do something a little bit more. Oh, there's a lot of iron gold. Yeah, this is how uh, we're gonna get our iron. I'm thinking if we put one iron golem in a hole, right? Wait, are these guys gonna protect us? Oh, they are protecting us. Oh, this is incredible. Oh, this is so good. We have an army. We have to do is you know how in like New Zealand there was like invasive frogs, so they introduced invasive snakes to the frogs, then the snakes started overpopulating, so they had to bring in. Yes. Like mongooses. Uh, and we could use cats to take care of the iron golem population. <laughs> well, I think, you know what, let's maybe get like a horde of zombies to, to clear out some of these. I think that would work. Let's get these zombies to fight them. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. one more, one more. There oh, we go. There are a lot of creepers as well. Yeah, yeah. I think I want to read. Yeah, wait, yes. are all these golems mad at you? Ah, uh, they seem to all be upset. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Oh, there's a lot of endermen. I forgot. Yeah. Really Wait, let's, let's let's go out on the ice, but avoid the golems, I guess. Okay, the creepers right behind. Yeah, it's starting to lag a bit. There's creepers everywhere. Okay, the, uh, the golems are fighting endermen. Yeah, the golems are fighting. Wait, are they dropping enderpearls? Wait, we need enderpearls. Okay, grab those. Okay, got it, got it, got it. If you see any pearls, pick them up. And this is all standard speedrun strat. Yes, right? this is exactly what you're going for. <laughs> okay. You start a, a, a civil war while no one's looking, and then pick up the pearls in, in the chaos. Yeah, let's let's get out of here just for now. Oh my god. I think that Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No. I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah, you just hold your shield up, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I'm sure you'll make it out alive. Actually alive. Let's go. Oh my you you should see that from my perspective. <laughs> that was insane. Why are the art going to chase more pressing matters, dude? Okay, alright, I gotta turn. I'm we're good. I'm alive somehow. Wait, are you gonna sprint? Oh, okay. oh, no, no, no. Alright, I'll have to you. I'll run your way to this. Oh, a lava pool. Okay, so what, uh, what do we do with this lava? How does this help us? We go to hell. You know what? After the two wars that we've started and been through and sort of survived through, I'm ready for the nether. Yeah, I think I'm trained up. I think we're ready. Now we need to find a fortress. Okay. I know some of those words. Like find an A? Yeah. <laughs> the last one, not so much. <laughs> Oh no! Um, oh, okay. I can set on fire a little bit. Um, I am so fine, I'm sure. Uh, just get behind me, get behind me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you still in there? Are you alive? I'm still alive, yes. I'm hurt. Okay, I guess. Uh, how on hell? I'm, I'm gonna. What? Do you do you do you do you <laughs> I don't know. I'm talking about it. I want you to, I want you to sniff, right click on this llama. Okay. Press E. Alright. See, see what pops up there? Yes. Look pork chop. Is there anything else that happens to show up? 
am I looking for? The llama has an inventory. Oh! So what if we put stuff into its inventory and then get hit? What happens? It duplicates? I don't know, let's find out! I'm gonna, I'm oh gonna put God. all my valuables in there and we're gonna do it. Okay, okay, yeah, good call. Yeah. No. I can stuff this llama full of pork chop. Punch me, Doug. Punch me. Oh my god. It works! It works! <laughs> it works! Again. Point time, Doug. Maybe one more, just for fun. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think we're covered on food. Yeah, I, I don't think we're gonna run out for for a while. Oh my god. Okay, so the circus might be slightly less peaceful than the last time you were is, is there still a llama alive? Yes. There's definitely still a llama. I alive. think I'll just have to accept putting in tails for us. You only get on my raw chicken. You <laughs> pushed <laughs> Alright, so now we can do full diamond armor and tools! Alright, here's all of our diamonds. Dude, you have like a hundred and fifty! <laughs> we killed so many moments! It's beautiful! This feels unethical. Alright, we need to do one more thing, and I think we're, we're set for a little while. So I have building blocks for the run. So, we are able yeah, to just go to the nether whenever we want, because I have, uh, about 800 obsidian in my inventory. So, somebody who doesn't play a lot of Minecraft, is that a lot? Yeah, it's more than the average player would expect to have at this point in the game. Got it. You know what, just because we have it, I want to go ahead and give this, uh, portal... Oh, yeah, you know, that's true. Yeah, just some flavor, you know. Hey, you know, make a little bit of extra... Yeah, it feels yeah, good yeah. when we're walking in. Oh. And now this is a portal I can get behind. Oh, wait, there's a fortress right here! This is exactly what we needed! Ooh, perfect! There is a wooden skull back there. It will chase us. We may need to run back. <gasps> ah! We're both on! No, no, no! Get in the game! Let's go! Run back! Run over here! Run over here! This is not a little more... How many ticks of fire was that? It was like three. That was like three. Look at it! Okay, there's a lot. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot. lot. There's a... Yeah, there's a lot more. But where is it? It's man! It's got like 20. Oh, the one time I take- uh oh. <laughs> oh Wait, we gotta run, we gotta run! It's good! Alright, so once we're, we're looking for the thingy where you put the, the eyes and her into the thing and then it turns into the thing, right? Exactly, yeah, we're looking for the thing. Just right here, I think. Yeah, that's a problem. It could be underwater. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's just deep underground. Wait, Dang. I have an idea. We're gonna have to run away a little bit, but we're gonna come back. Place the bed down. Okay. Perfect, now get out of bed. Uh-oh. That's a lot of <laughs> A lot of dog. And you see, they, they do a fair bit of damage. Yeah, no, they're doing a good job! Yeah. I'm definitely seeing the demonstration. I don't think so. Uh-oh. So, I took fall damage. You have twice as many dogs now. Right? I don't see the problem here. If we go over this way, I think there's an opening. Alright, made a little opening for us. I think we might just be able to make a staircase downwards. <laughs> oh my god, what the hell? They all took the board down! Why are they attacking me? Oh no! No, what are you doing? They're not attacking me! It's just entity grabbing! It was an entity grabbing. If 24 mobs are in a single block, then. Oh god. If 24 mobs are in a single block, then they, uh, then they start to die. I think I might be able to unload my dogs so they don't kill us. Uh, words. Buckets. Uh, make sure you keep the soul sand as well. Oh. Why do we do that? Uh, for, uh, for the end. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so are the dogs still with you? No, I unloaded them, so oh, okay. we do not have any dogs anymore. Where is the, uh, what's that sound? <laughs> Nothing to worry about. We have the uh, drop thing, the drop uh, brooch, and a belief thingy. <laughs> Assuming they stack. A belief thingy they, they should like still help with the rare drops. Okay, alright. Alright, I'll try. We'll warm up to him. Wait. Yeah, what's wrong with me? Oh. Um, okay. Looks like a lot of friends are down there as well. <laughs> looks like we oh, have okay. oh, 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 oops, I got hit. Alright, dude. Maybe it looks like a couple of people. I go back to you. Oh, so it, it, Yeah, in the tip. Oh, 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 are we going? Oh, 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 o
root for you. I believe in you. Well, I, I need help. Alright, so... I just need to do the exact same thing that we're set, right? Yeah, that was... That was... Alright, I've been training for this all day long. Here we go. Oh, okay. Uh... Oh, you're not here? You are here. Hey! Come in, come in! Hey! Okay, well that's a start! Yeah, that worked great! Oh wait, I found the end! Oh, is this where we put all the Ender Pearl thingies that we made? Yes, this is where we're gonna put them. You wanna do the honors? Sure! Lots of wars. Yes. Lots of dogs. Make sure to set your spawn here, I gotta... I gotta think just oh. Alright, I'm done. I'm ready. I'm gonna keep charming. <sighs> Let's do this. <sighs> Uh, let's take a block. It has shot one of the missed. Oh, you took damage. Okay. Yeah, I did. Wait, wait, wait. Get the dragon. Wait. Oh god, there's two dragons! Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. You okay. cannot make sure not to take damage. Is, is the health bar gonna refer to one of them? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how the health bar works. I think one of them is. Oh, don't walk too close or else. So, so what happens now that I'm <laughs> going right back to the portal? Okay, okay. Oh, oh wait! Oh my god! How much damage did you do? I mean, one bit. So, uh. Oh! Oh! Everything's looking bad! I can only totally think of one way to get rid of all of these. So, there's multiple bosses in this game, and one of the bosses dislikes everything, including other bosses. So I'm just gonna spawn some withers and see what happens. I just need to figure out how not to die in 10 seconds. Because the frame rate is... Whoop! Now the game's slowing down just a little bit. Yeah. I've noticed that... Okay. I've spawned the, one of the bosses. Do you... You think we just have to kill one? I think we probably have to kill one. I think we just need to kill one of them, yeah. Okay, I've got another wither just for some support. So, so... How are we gonna how are we work on this dragon? I have actually no idea. Oh my. I don't know. There are so many dragons. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be able that, to... Why am I getting all of the owls out. now? Like, it seems a little tough. Where am I? Ah! I may as well. Unless I'm out, try to head bind them whatever. It's a secret strat that I've never used before. Give me a minute or two to go find it. It's It just takes a little bit of time. Chad, how do you custom enchant things? Hey, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Great dragon slip. It's incredible we found this out for a while. If this doesn't work, I think I have one other hallway that I can check. But let's give it a try. There's one way we're gonna go out. Shooting a legendary bullet of dragon. Oh my god! The dragon's nice. here, folks! Alright, take a shot! I hit one! Okay, I'm in! Uh... I hit one! So the question is... Did it deal damage? Uh, Jack, just so you know, I'm holding forward. What the server, guys? <laughs> what? You know what happens? The dragons in the server are dead. We get it. We got it. That was a journey. It was. I think I can safely say. I finally beat my house. What an experience. Man, this was so much fun. Thank you for inviting me. Oh my goodness. Why legs? <laughs> Emily, explain. Oh, I got a bound beak. Never mind. Good job, Emily. Even though I don't need them anymore. Try floor two, maybe.
してみますわこれもこっちもですわかったあ、the big guys only show up on the third floor I believe I need one more armor tail.
Hmm, small is fun, but I think I should just... I really should just focus on raw DPS. Rather than bothering with all these status ailments. ま、ったら。行ってらっしゃい。じっくり見ていくが良いぞ。おやおや、お帰りか。らっしゃい。どれにすっか決まったか俺にするんだね。うん。うん。うん。しっかりね。Mally doesn't need any new stuffs. Need to grind army wasps real quick. I 
How come she's discovering more consumable items than Shape Rose is provided by Surfshark VPN. Tune in to the end to find out about their amazing service. <laughs> Doom Syndicate is a 2024 American animated superhero parody film produced by DreamWorks Animation Television. Let me let me just run that by you again. DreamWorks Animation Television. This is not a real theatrical sequel in the same sense as Kung Fu Panda 2, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, Shrek 2, etc. This is following in the same vein as like the Penguins of Madagascar TV show on Nickelodeon. Or the King Julian show on Netflix, the How to Train Your Dragon shows, the Kung Fu Panda show, and so on and so forth. You know, those uh, those TV shows aren't um, aren't exactly on par with the movies they're based on, you know? I mean, I grew up watching the Penguins of Madagascar show, and I think it's pretty good. I'm sure all these other shows have their fans as well. But the thing is, none of these shows have ever had the burden of carrying their franchises, you know? They come out as a little supplement for kids to watch in between the releases of the big budget theatrical sequels. The real Dreamworks movies, Megamind vs. the Doom Syndicate, and the ensuing TV show Megamind Rules are obviously following the same vein as these TV shows. Yeah, they're meant to be just little supplements in between the franchise's big theatrical movies. But there's a little problem with that, isn't there? You see, Megamind vs. the Doom Syndicate is not meant as a supplement to a theatrical sequel. Because there is no theatrical sequel. And what's more, all those TV shows I talked about came out very shortly after their original films. Megamind vs. the Doom Syndicate was not advertised as a simple right, whoops, TV show spin-off right, for right. kids. It was advertised as Megamind's grand, long-awaited return. And this was clearly an attempt to appeal to nostalgic adults who grew up watching Megamind as kids. Because if this show was just meant to be for kids, well then, why are you making a Megamind show? It has been 14 years since the original came out. This character does not have the same relevance among children that he would have had had the show come out in, like, 2011. The concept that they made this solely because they thought Megamind was a popular character for a child demographic is black. They have done nothing with this franchise since 2010, and thus, he is the relevance to modern children. Which brings us to the real reason Megamind returned only now. The internet. Some wise guy over at DreamWorks caught wind to the fact that Megamind had amassed a huge cultural following online, rivaling even that of the major franchises like Shrek or Kung Fu Panda. This is something that had been brewing for years, largely thanks to the fact that those kids who watched Megamind back in 2010 started growing up, looking back, realizing, damn, 
that movie was really funny, and it was a very subversive and smart take on superheroes, morality, incel behavior, and a ton of other things. I feel like most people wow. I talk to appreciate Megamind more as an adult than they did as a kid. As a kid, it's goofy and funny and whatnot, but I don't know. I feel like most kids would be more attached to the inherent awesomeness of Kung Fu Panda or the antics of those wacky Madagascar animals. I mean, dude, those animals are so fucking funny. I think these are just stronger kid-centric franchises than the movie where there's a ton of relationship drama and mature self-discovery from multiple characters, and also an incel. I can confirm all this because as a kid, yeah, I liked Mega Mind. I thought it was good, but stuff like Madagascar and Kung Fu Panda appealed to me way more. Yes, their box office and continued franchise ability is proof of that. Oh, and as a disclaimer, I'm not saying Kung Fu Panda doesn't have mature moments. I'm just saying funny epic panda kung fu is easier for a child to latch onto than funny science blue guy in relationship drama. I don't know. So with all of this said, I think it's pretty clear that this belated revival of Megamind, of all possible DreamWorks franchises, that never got a sequel is a direct result of how popular and beloved it is on the internet. I mean, think about it. They could have revived something like Shark Tale instead. Is that really what the kids want? Let's say I'm a DreamWorks executive. I'm just looking up if the kids were talking about Shark Tale. What the? It's a cinematic disaster. Well, I guess no one wants that to be revived. Now, how about Megamind? Whoa, it's a subversive masterpiece? And 17 million people agree? Well, hot diggity dog, that might be a profitable franchise to revive. Okay, I jest, but in all seriousness, while I think it would be foolish to say that there was a non-zero percent chance that the popularity of a certain video on Megamind got the ball rolling on the idea of reviving it, the truth of the matter is, I don't think it did. Wow, look at me being so humble. I deserve the humble award. Nah, but in all honesty, a lot of people I've talked to have credited me with really sparking the conversation about Megamind and its positive reputation within the internet community. But I think those people are kind of misremembering that. Megamind and the brilliance of its writing was talked about everywhere before my video came out. And if anything, my video was just kind of a consolidation of all the praise everyone was already thinking. I do think some of my videos got the ball rolling on certain film opinions. For instance, I didn't really see much praise for Shrek 4 before my video came out, but I noticed a lot more people popping up to say they enjoyed it nowadays. Thank you, however, sure that video must have had some of how some people view the film, but I feel like it was more so riding the wave of Megamind's popularity. I think getting rid of Mola is actually a great benefit for me. TP saving wise, because the most efficient way to play the game is to kill things fast. All of that was a very roundabout way of saying, I am not responsible for this. My video did not will this into existence, you hear me? I washed my hands of you, Megamind vs. the Doom Syndicate! Anyway, I would explain why I'm so eager to do so with this new film. Do I really have to? If you've seen the trailer, you get it. This is not the revival anyone wanted for Megamind. If this had just been a 2011 Nickelodeon tie-in TV show thing, I don't think anyone would have cared. But they were trying to hype us up. Not the children, us. The Megamind loving 20 something stuck in a perpetual state of arrested development. Hey, that's the name of the show. The trailer proudly proclaims Megamind is back. And you're welcome. Like, we should be thanking them because this is what we wanted, right? A ton of people have expressed the sentiment that Megamind should have gotten a bunch of sequels instead of its rival at the time, Despicable Me, or other Dreamwork franchises like The Boss Baby. Well, this is the sequel we've all been looking for! An exceptionally shitty looking movie with none of the original voice cast returning, with significantly worse animation, which also serves as a pilot for a TV show of similar non-existent quality. Yeah, Megamind is back! You're welcome! I considered ignoring this because maybe if I ignore it, it'll go away. I mean, I don't see any reason to pick on the boss baby back in business or spirit riding or whatever, DreamWorks is always going to make TV spin-offs of lesser animation quality that are even more geared towards kids than their original films. And there's really no conceivable reason to get mad about this, right? It's obvious what they are. And the same would apply to Megamind, except it's just so obvious that DreamWorks 
wants my generation to watch this. Because without my generation, they would have never even made it. So if they're gonna treat the new Megamind as a big event that people my age should pay attention to, I guess it's only fair to judge it as such. Huh, you asked for this DreamWorks? Why not take a look at just how well this holds up as a follow-up to Megamind? And since I might as well be comprehensive so I can put this whole experience to rest and never think about it again after this, I'm gonna cover the eight episodes of the TV series as well. You know, at first I thought, only eight episodes? Really? Like, why are TV seasons so short now? And then after watching five minutes of the first episode, I thought, oh dear god, why is this season so long? Oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start out with the one and only Megamind 2 as some people have taken to calling it. Hell, even I did for this video's title, because it's just shorter, and that way you can see the rest of the words. But don't be fooled. This is not Megamind 2. I think that's going to become apparent very quickly. Well, nothing left to do but jump on in. First and foremost, keep this movie for making me get a Peacock subscription. I don't know, I guess now I can finally watch that tech show everyone was raving about back in January. That sounds a lot better than this. Do I have to watch the movies first, though? Is this like Better Call Saul where it flashes forward to post-Breaking Bad events so you won't have the full context for this prequel unless you watch the thing that came out first? Damn, you know what? I guess I can't do the Megamind review until I know that for sure. Oh, well. James, good news. You don't need to watch the tech movies in order to understand the tech prequel show. Whack, whack. Great, William. Thank you very much. I guess I'm out of excuses. So we see the DreamWorks logo, and Megamind interrupts it in a very stilted and awkward way. Speaking of stilted and awkward, uh, uh this voice. Hello, loyal viewers. Hey, now, let's make one thing clear. I don't want to see any of you clowns going out there and harassing any of the voice actors involved in this production. Or the writers, or the animators, etc, etc. The only people you should harass are the network executives. It's always morally correct. Obviously, the voice actors are just doing as good a job as they can, trying to fill the big shoes left by Will Ferrell, Tina Fey, and David Cross. I want to say they're doing a bad job in general. As in potato voices, though, yeah, I mean, surely there was someone out there that could have gotten who actually sounds like Feral, right? Somebody? Anyway, not Megamind says, Like me, you probably never thought this day would come. It's not this one. Uh, but neither is the actual voice of the show. Sorry. I see some old friends. I see new friends. And if that doesn't tip you off to who they're trying to market this product to, I don't know what will. Oh, look! We're his old friends! <laughs> we never thought we'd get Megamind too. And there's a good reason for that, because we still have it. Okay, who's ready for the first joke Megamind tells? It's probably gonna be super hilarious, right? I see friends who think I should put some pants on and venture outside again. I don't exactly think I need to explain that the wit and charm of the first movie's humor is all gone. It's blatantly obvious if you watch one minute of this. Oh, 15 seconds is probably all you need to get the picture. Megamind next explains the plot of the first movie to us. Without any jokes, really. It's pretty much the laziest possible way to catch viewers up on the story. And most of the stuff he talks about, like Metro Man and Titan, do not factor into this movie's story at all. You could have just not had this here. Stop reminding me that I could be watching a real movie instead. I'm depressed enough as it is. So after the title drop, we meet the Go Fish Gang. They are a gang who wear fish outfits and they are robbing an aquarium. I mean, I've seen less creative things before, I guess. They're gonna steal a fish and Megamind is gonna stop them. And now, three minutes in, we have our first real get a load of this. Ooh, so, Minion explains that due to a cease and desist order from the fast food chain Mr. Minion's Meatsicles, he can no longer call himself Minion, and Ooh, his name is now Chum. <sighs> Let's get into this. So, obviously this is a sly reference to the fact that the Minions exist, and pretty much took up all the mental headspace associated with that work. It's basically the Megamind franchise admitting defeat and acknowledging that Despicable Me won the culture wars or whatever. And I have to ask, what, you guys pick five? Just call him Minion. Who cares that the Minions are a thing that exists? It's a name based off of a word. Illumination does not own the word. What was Illumination again? Universal, yeah, they don't own the word. Curious. Who owns DreamWorks now? What the? Universal owns them both now! So what's wrong with calling the Minion? Maybe they don't want to get their merch 
merchandising opportunities. Ah, I think people love it. Iconic, strong characters mixed up. The sad thing is, I actually kind of like the name Chum. It's a cute fish pun and a reflection that Megamind sees him as a friend rather than just a servant. But instead of having a nice moment where Megamind says that sort of thing, now let's throw in a copyright joke. Oopsie, oopsie. Don't want to step on the minion shoes now, do we? Basically, what I'm trying to say is that this is the one and only circumstance where it's okay to dead beat someone. He's still minion. Fuck you. Anyway, what happens in this scene? Uh, the worst looking CGI shark of all time slides in, and Megamind stops it with the dehydration gun. It then traps the fish boys in a portable prison. But oh no, it malfunctions, and now they're getting away! Man, if only he had some sort of weapon that could stop them in their tracks. You know, like like a gun that turns you into an inanimate cube or something. Oh well. Uh, this is a great example right off the bat of just how horribly stilted everything is from a directorial perspective. Nothing in this scene is kinetic at all. Everything is just so slow and awful. When the prison deactivates, Megamind barely reacts. He just goes to the idol animation, and then it cuts to him being like, Minion, this is embarrassing! Bro, do something to stop them! Again, if only he had a gun or something that could immobilize them. So yeah, he meets the fish boys with a shark and a Rick and Morty portal or something. I don't know, man. I'm not gonna recap every last bit of plot this movie has for you. Watching this once was so crushing enough. I don't need to relive it all for your entertainment. I probably will, though. Okay, so broad strokes issues. You know, other than the awful, unfunny writing, and stilted direction, and unfitting voice acting, and terrible animation, and insulting existence. Uh, here's one. For some completely inexplicable reason, Megamind is an unappreciative asshole to Minion now. Which is insane, because as a supervillain, he always valued Minion as a trusted partner and his only friend. Now, he's supposed to be a good guy, and he treats Minion significantly worse. I mean, I guess a lot could change in all the time it's been since the first movie. You know, a whole two days ago. Two days? It's only been two days, and all of a sudden, Megamind doesn't value Minion's friendship at all. Bro, you renamed to Chum. Why is he not your Chum anymore? What is wrong with you? But before we get to that, we got Roxanne, who realized in the last two days that she doesn't like her reporting job anymore, since she's not accomplishing anything herself. Oh no! But don't worry, we got some random stupid kid to show her the magic of being a Twitch streamer. This is Keiko. She got half a million followers hosting this Megamind streaming fan club, which only could have happened in the two days since Megamind became a hero. She got half a million followers in two days. Again, I feel like a lot of this movie's problems, not all, or even most, honestly, would be solved if it just wasn't two days after the first movie. Anyway, Roxanne is like, wow, half a million followers. That's ten times the number of views I get. So is the movie setting Roxanne up to be a Twitch streamer later on? Nah, they're setting up something that's much more of a stretch. Can't wait to show you what that is. Now the stupid kid talks to Megamind, and this movie begins to reveal the true form of the premise for the show it's setting up. Much like how the demon of Babylon disguises himself with the coat of the righteous. It's about content creation, and social media, and streaming, and influencing! Her generation was born tech-savvy. Whoopee! We're so hip with the kids and whatnot. I guess this whole time, Megamind took place in the future instead of 2010. Since two days after its events, we're in the age of online content creation. This, of course, is why we see so much streaming and smartphones and influencing in the original Megamind. Like, we're not at the bulk of this shit yet. First, we have to have the totally earned and not at all forced scene where Minion and Megamind break up. Again. Hey, remember how they did that in the first movie, but it made more sense because Megamind was obsessed with Roxanne and didn't want to be a villain anymore, and Minion felt betrayed. And yeah, turns out they broke up again two days after reconciling because Mega Man doesn't value him at all. This is also the first time he talks to Roxanne in this movie, in a scene that's about Minion and not their relationship. Bro, I just can't do this. So yeah, Minion reads an in-universe AI-generated speech to him, asks to be a sidekick, and Megamind says, You can't be my sidekick, I'm the hero, and you're the guy who gets to hang out with the hero. Is that not what a sidekick is? Wasn't being his minion kind of already like being his sidekick? Whatever, they break up and Megamind doesn't care. He's like, oh, he'll be back. I'm just negotiating. Oh boy, sometimes I miss the simplicity of the bad old days. You know, 
earlier this week. Whatever, man. What's the next important scene? I just want to make Pikmin videos instead of this. <laughs> oh boy, now it's time to meet the Doom Syndicate. They all suck and are not threatening nor funny. The lava guy is just a Skylander. There's a knight, and he's also a knight knight, and his name is Nighty Knight. Whoa, slow down, movie. You're going too hard with all these amazing villain concepts. I'm an actual knight, which is also super dark. What is it, dark? What? What was the joke there? That doesn't make any sense. So it turns out these four are Megamind's old team. And I shouldn't have to tell you that the first movie made it clear that Megamind never had a team. It was him and Minion against the world. We all know this. That alone is grounds to claim this is non-canon in a way I could never really do legitimately for Shrek the Third. That was obviously always just a joke. But this is actively and flagrantly not a part of the Megamind canon. Also, oh no, the villains are in jail. How are they gonna get out? Oh, very easily, actually. Why were they all just in regular jail and not solitary, super secure cells like the one Megamind was in in the original film? Well, um, you see, the night guy says, Hello darkness, my old friend. That's a funny reference. You, sir, just won the internet for today. After the escape, we then find out that Megamind is tracking Roxanne without her permission with a bobblehead he gave her as a gift. Wow, what a good character. He also does not know how to operate a toaster. Wow, what a smart character. Isn't his whole shtick is that he has a really big brain? You know, like, he's not supposed to be one of the dumbest characters in all of fiction because he has a big brain. Anyway, oh goody, the Doom Syndicate are here to congratulate Megamind because they think he's still evil and that he tricked everyone to take over the city. Apparently, they were just laying low in prison and waiting for his signal before escaping <laughs> and joining him. Hey, you, uh... You know what would have made even more sense as a signal to break out and join him? When he took over the city as a supervillain in the first movie. Remember that? That would have been a way more logical time to join him if you guys existed at all back then. You did, right? The writers definitely didn't pull you out of their asses, right? It's crazy how they could have just made these characters exist without contradicting everything about the original film's canon. But they went the extra mile and threw continuity and basic logic in the garbage just for us. I'm so happy about that. So now Metal Man gets to pretend he's still evil to these guys, and also pretend he and Roxanne are evil Mary, or else the evil guys are gonna kill him or something. I mean, this feels like a movie made for preschoolers, so they probably won't kill him, but I kinda wish they would, because that means no more Megamind, we can all go home and stop watching this shit forever, yay! Now the villains are going on a rampage, and Megamind is like, Oh, woe is me, how do I stop them? Gee, I don't know, man. If only you had a really convenient gadget that could turn someone into an immobile cube really easily, then you might have a chance. Hey, look at that! It's Mr. Minion of the popular Mr. Minion's Meesicles chain. Literally, what about it resembles a minion at all? Not that kind of minion. Though, if you wanted to make a joke like that, you could. But, like, he doesn't even look like an evil minion. It's just a shot. I can't believe Shark Tale isn't the DreamWorks movie with the laziest billboards anymore. Okay, so Mamba Man also saves Stupid Kid from a falling thing, and she's like, Whoa, Megamind, you just saved yours truly from becoming a human vegan pancake. Uh, 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 okay, wait, can, can someone explain this one to me? So is she saying that she's a vegan, so it would be a pancake made out of a vegan? Or, like, is the pancake made out of vegan ingredients aside from her, so that's why it's human vegan? Or is she implying that she is not meat, and in fact is a plant creature? Time to break out the Kaiko plant creature theory! Anyway, now the goon squad wants to rob a bank, except they decide they just want to watch Megamind do it instead. Uh oh, but he's a good guy now! Talk about awkward! Speaking of which... Why don't you all go back to treating me like you did in the bad old days? But 
less when you were evil. I am dead serious, you guys. I genuinely believe Madam Web has a better screenplay than this. Stupid kid comes in and says, Don't worry, guys. This is just the safety drill. And everyone in the bank is like, Oh, yeah, okay, it makes sense. And the villains watching from the window who didn't hear any of this are like, Wow, he's so evil. He even stops for selfies. I wish I was making this up, you guys. This is one of the most unbearable pieces of shit I've watched in such a long time. I am counting down these seconds until it is finally over. <laughs> Now the Doom Syndicate is throwing yeah, a rave at Megamind's lair for some reason. It's such a wild and crazy party that this guy forgot that he was supposed to be animated. Oh, mama, what a professional feature break when we got in our hands here. Ooh, now it's time for the wacky scenario where the Goldfish Gang shows up and they're about to reveal that Megamind's really a hero. The Doom Syndicate texted them to come to Megamind's place and they show up and they're looking for Megamind. It's so fast, man, that I should be going to bed, but fuck it, to our video still. Uh, but then we would have the funny, wacky scene where Mega Man distracts them with his sick ding tunes. Two of them have a weightless, tensionless dance battle, and eventually Mega Mind resorts to getting all the fish guys with the dehydration gun. Cool. Hey, wait, so he'll use it on these guys, but not the Doom Syndicates? Oh, how do I stop four villains at once? Just that with a deep tracing guy! The movie never says that their superpowers are preventing them from being dehydrated, and it's not like any of them have Metro Man or Titan super speed, so shoot them with the gun! Right now, they're distracted and dancing and everything! Or if not, right now, you can isolate each one of them at some point because they all trust you! So shoot them with the gun! So the next day, Roxanne is muffins a joke that the muffins are bad. She doesn't know how to make muffins, but if you wanted the joke to land, you could have made the muffins look a lot worse than they did, because they look perfect. If they just taste bad, then the joke doesn't, um, the, the, the joke doesn't exactly work. You can apply a similar sentiment to every joke in this movie, actually. I did not laugh chuckle or even smile once watching this. There's one joke later on that was the kernel of a good idea for a joke. It just was not delivered very well, and we'll get to it later. So it's revealed oh. that Megamind's old plan that they're doing now is to take Metrocity to the moon. Hey, that's that's kind of like how the, the other movie, hey, how, how, how he, uh, how, how he, like, stole the, how he stole the moon in that movie. Remember that? It's crazy how all of the Despicable Me sequels and the Minions movies are better than this. Oh no, Mega Man is trying to stall the moon launch and the Doom Syndicate is getting sus of him. He's been acting out of character since we got him. Thank you, that's what I'm saying! Oh baby, it's time for another one of Mega Mind 2's epic jokes! Are you ready for this? It turns out the password for the launch is THX8675309. You see, this is a brilliant full reference to the loud thing that shows up in front of old Pixar movies. And the funny song about the phone number 8675309. Are you laughing yet? Oh no, Megamind is so scared because Titan was only one villain! This is a whole syndicate of them! Never mind the fact that Titan was mm -hmm. basically a god, and these four are not only huge idiots, but their powers are mind who hypnotizes people. Night makes things dark. Lava monster would probably be stopped with a big water balloon. The only one I can see mildly posing a threat is Weather Lady, and even then, she hasn't used her weather powers for anything threatening at all yet. None of them have. The idea that Megamind Ooh. finds these guys to be an overwhelming, unstoppable force is a deeply insane premise An infinite no use analyze. Whatsoever. Once again, it cannot be a difficult task to pretend you're meeting with each of them one-on-one, -on -one, and then shoot them with the fucking dehydration gun! It is the easiest solution in the whole damn world! What the f*** is your problem? You don't understand. That, as well as the countless gadgets Megamind has built over the years, is not enough. He needs Minion Man. 
so they derailed the plot entirely to bear witness to what clearly should have been just an episode of the TV show. Earlier, Minion got a job at this shitty diner, and now he turned it around, and it's a good place that has good donuts, and Megamind is like, Minion, you gotta come back. Like, no, I like donuts. And Megamind's like, okay, and Minion will come back later. It, it'll happen. I've seen it before. Megamind 2 is banking on the child audience that it is clearly made for to have never seen a movie in order to make this scene work. Oh yeah, and Megamind and Roxanne had trouble getting in because of the guard lady, but stupid kid showed up and helped them get in because she gave her a cockroach. And then the weird thing about this scene is that everybody in line is just kind of staring at them and not complaining that they're cutting in front of them. They're just okay with this. It's crazy how Cars 2 is better than this movie. So I didn't pick up on this the first time I watched it, but the Doom Syndicate is watching a show called Crab Cake Wars. Crustacean Devastation. That's pretty random for them to reference crabs of all things. Could that be a reference to a certain YouTuber who made a Megamind show? I genuinely kind of doubt it, but I feel like I can get a lot of comments about it if I didn't address that. So, there you go. I feel nothing. Even if there was somehow a direct reference to me in this thing, I would also feel nothing. Megamind vs. the Doom Syndicate is broken. Not because it's a betrayal of everything I hold dear about the original. I'm just That's not the main The main reason is that it's one of the most deep, worried, and unbearable things I've ever seen. Wanna know where it would rank among the Disney sequels? Last place. It is worse than Belle's Magical World and Hunchback 2. Because at least Hunchback 2 had Sarouche, and Belle's Magical World had... Um, whatever, this is still worse than that. And it's worse than any real DreamWorks movie, including Turbo and Shrek the Third. It's so bad in so many ways that it's kind of soul crushing. Like, I genuinely do not have it in me to get that engaged about it overall. It really isn't worth it. And we still I'm have. Fairly certain this minutes. guy doesn't have any weaknesses. Oh my god! You know, Sheer oh, heart attack doesn't have any weaknesses. So I got to look at the glorious and prestigious 10% score every time I paused the movie to write about it. And let's be honest, 10%? It's more than a little generous. Okay, guess what, guys? Megamind finally has a plan to defeat the Doom Syndicate. It took him all movie to come up with this, but he's finally got one. Are you ready? He uses the portable prison he used on the fish guys at the beginning of the movie. It took him that long to come up with that. That's not even a plan he has that already. What's this movie's problem? Anyway, guess what? You know how the porta potty broke earlier when he tried to use it on the fish guys? Well, it breaks now because he never got it fixed. What a brilliant plan to save the entire fate of Matrocity on. Megamind tries to tell them, it's just a prank, bro. And did you think that that was just my casual, nonchalant way of expressing what happens through a vintage meat quote? No, that's actually what he says in the goddamn movie. It's a prank, bro! And then he sweats, and the sweat trickles down all the way to his belt where the three fish guys were being stored, and it rehydrates them, and they are really. Oh no, what an overwhelming and bleak situation that the man has found himself in. It feels totally earned, and I am experiencing a very real sense of dread. <laughs> How? You are blind! Okay, so, uh, so, 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 so they kill Megamind finally. Oh my god, took you long enough. And Weather Lady says, let's relocate to a better neighborhood. Malapa Skylander says, Mongolia? Once again, I do not get what the joke was supposed to be there, so send, send, send me the joke in the mail. This Please email me the explanation of what this joke means, and I will love it. I, I will literally drink water here, so thank you. Okay, next we have to have the scene where, uh, the scene where he's sad, his Megamind's alone, and about to lose all the good things in his life, and then he gets pep talks or whatever from Roxanne and stupid kid, and he comes back. 
guys, I've never wanted a video to be over more in my entire life, and we're not even at the TV show yet. Oh my god, how did my life go so wrong? I beginning when the when 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 when, when shark uh surf sorry my brain is broken I can't think of transition sorry Surfshark VPN is an incredible product that protects you online Surfshark you can trick your browser into thinking you're in another country thus allowing you to access exclusive Netflix Disney Plus Eha etc content you couldn't get otherwise that way you don't have to physically travel to trust the PC um Rescue, devastation, and the show sounds so much better than this mega line shit, not gonna lie. Plus, use its Surfshark alert system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Surfshark alert scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so they can take action, which is an absolutely invaluable feature. Surfshark is also totally unlimited. You can use it on as many devices as you like, even all at the same time. No other VPN allows this. Go to surfshark.deal slash relic and enter promo code RILLA to get 80% off and three extra months of Surfshark VPN for free. It's an amazing deal. It's even better because it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you can cancel during those 30 days and get your money back. If you're looking for a great VPN, there's no reason not to give Surfshark a try. Once again, head to surfshark.deal slash Rillis and enter the promo code Rillis. Have a great time with Surfshark VPN. Now it's time for the epic lead up for the final showdown, which consists of the Doom Syndicate just kinda hitting the door over and over for an hour to break it, and Mega Mind of Friends going on a silly shop on time. Get supplies for the price. I can't think of anything more epic than that. Megamind says the closest thing to a competent joke in the movie. Hey, <laughs> Whoever came up with that scheme is a real evil genius. Megamind really said capitalism, baby. That'd be pretty cool if this was the real Megamind, but it's not. Okay. The Nucky is bemoaning the fact that everything he did to break the door failed. They can't get in. And immediately, the joke is gonna be. And hit the door one more time, and then it's gonna fall down. That's what nearly every single joke in this movie is like. Whatever you think is gonna happen as a co subversion will happen. Nothing is ever subverted. It's all predictable and poorly timed, and again, only really funny to someone who has literally never seen a movie before because they are in it. Also, am I stupid, or did the first movie end with the implication that Megamind and Roxanne were gonna be a romantic couple? Because in this movie, they aren't. Like, oh, there's romantic connection. Oh, it's complicated. I'm sorry, why are we doing a will they, won't they romantic plotline here? Can't character relationships just progress and stay progressed? I mean, none of this is canon anyway, obviously, so I guess I don't care. All the basic lore inconsistencies pretty much imply that this is a Penguins of Madagascar TV show situation. Because in that show, there was clearly no point in the timeline where the penguins and the lemurs would have been at the zoo together. It's obviously just an AU, and that's what this is too. Don't worry guys, it didn't really ruin the Megamind timeline, even though it kind of did ruin the franchise. It's like, what? You think they're gonna make a real theatrical sequel after this shit? Oh well, the first movie is intact and it was always better as a standalone story anyway. Let's leave it at that. I guess before we do that, though, I have to finish this cool shit. Next, Megamind and Roxanne distract the Doom Syndicate with tennis balls. These are extremely effective against the four nefarious villains that Megamind didn't know how to defeat for days on end then. Christopher Dear Evan Hansen is a better movie. Megamind is all like, I know Minion. He's cleverly slipped Belair's defenses. Take a wild he guessed what it's gonna come to after he says that. You'll never believe it. Minion didn't slip through the Lakers defenses. That's so funny. <laughs> now it's time to pair with Mr. Roxanne's totally natural and argument. See, earlier she met with the mayor, and the mayor is an idiot who doesn't know what to do in any situation. So she told him stuff he could do because he doesn't have any aides who could do that for him, I suppose. And now that the city is flying into space, the mayor is once again incompetent and doesn't know how to lead in this situation. So I guess it's up to Roxanne to lead everyone in 
shooting these trained paramedics, police, and firefighters because they didn't know what to do until this random reporter lady told them. Meanwhile, Minion defeats the fish gang without his suit because they are the most incompetent characters in the movie. No, I can't even say that. Everyone's a level of incompetence. So he stops the city from flying into space, but now it's just gonna crash into the Earth. Hey, this is just the climax of Age of Ultron! What kind of fraud operation is this? Anyway, Make a Mind tricks them into arguing about who's the leader, because they were arguing about that the whole movie, and it did not get annoying. He then beats them in really underwhelming ways, and then they stop the city from falling too fast. Hooray! The mayor yells at them for this, and Roxanne is like, Haha, you're a bad mayor, I can do your job better. And then they immediately have an election, and she's the mayor now. That was her art. She became the mayor because who else in the city could tell the trained so paramedics to go help people? We needed this reporter lady to tell us that. Whoopee! And Megamind finally learned the difference between villains and heroes. Bad guys look out for themselves. Heroes look out for each other. Whoa, what a crazy revelation, guys! I can't believe it! And then a robot parakeet poops on him at the end. Oh, excuse me, it's not the end. We have to have a post two seconds of credit stinger where the Doom Syndicate is in prison and greeted by a floating brain called Machia Villain, the guy who taught Megamind everything he knows about me. And wait a second, he grew up in prison and learned it all. What are you fucking talking about? Just stop! And that was Megamind versus the Doom Syndicate. Again, if it was just a TV movie that came out 14 years ago, nobody would. You can all just ignore it and go about our very way. But no, Dreamworks had to hype it up and say, We hear you, Megamind fans. This is the sequel to Desert. You're welcome! It might genuinely be one of the most insulting things I've ever seen. To the point where I'd say it stands pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with Surf's up to Wave Mania in terms of being an absolutely insane bastardization of every single aspect of the original that was good. I know I yelled a lot, but I don't really have it in me to despise it on the level that you might have wanted from me. Which is pretty surprising considering just how long I talked about its awfulness. Nah, I will truly forget everything that happens in this within a month. I don't think anything in it will give me nightmares, quite like the sight of Vince McMahon milking a fish's utter name. I'm just glad I can officially say I talked about this, and we can all move on with our lives now, and- What's that? No. No, I don't. I don't have to talk about the TV show, do I? No. No. You can't make me talk about the TV show. Under no circumstances will I ever talk about the TV show, ever. Now you see, kids, this is the part where it cuts to me talking yes, about the TV show, which is funny, because I just said that I wasn't going to. You are now a comedy master on the same level as the Mega Mind Rules writers. Episode 1 of Mega Mind Rules is perhaps even worse than the The only benefit it has is the fact that it's 22 minutes and not 90. You might be wondering, how can it possibly be worse than the movie? What could possibly follow up that f***ing atrocity? Oh, you're in for a treat today, kids! Alright, first things first. The show has a theme song. If I'm being honest, it's not bad. I actually give it a ton of props for having lyrics. Something that a lot of kids shows these days don't have in their openings for some reason. Adam Lambert apparently did the song. He's like, a real musician. Oh, great. The only issue with it is the lyric, a superhero that can stream online. Now, obviously this is a double meaning, since within the show, people see him on streams. Oh, wait, we haven't gotten to that part yet. Oh, whoopsie. Sorry to spoil the big reveal, my bad. But yeah, it makes sense within the context of the show, but it's also meant to be like, hey look, you're streaming his show online. They baked the fact that this is a piece of streaming garbage into the actual theme song. What kind of sick, twisted f***ing show does that? Anyway, the episode, titled Megamind vs. Dude Monkey, no word for a real treat with a title like that. So I'm not gonna recap the plot for all these episodes, I'm just gonna cover the major beats and the lowlights. Basically, there's a new crime fighter in town. His name is Dude Monkey. He's an influencer! He streams all the crime-fighting escapades and stuff! 
If you guys played the Miles Morales game, you might remember that fucking annoying as shit villain lady who was streaming all the time. Yeah, he's like that, but a hero. Wow, I'm so excited. So Mega Mind goes to Roxanne and she throws a monitor at him, which causes him to fall forward into her office instead of backwards. That makes sense. Because here we get to see the absolutely abysmal state of the Roxamine ship. Is that what's called? I thought. Megamind gets into a little tip with Roxanne's assistant, Christina. And to break it up, Roxanne is like, Kids, stop fighting! And they're all like, I will when you admit I'm the favorite. So basically, Roxanne just sees Megamind as her petulant, annoying child now, and not a loving child. Which, like, given the way he acts in this show, yeah, I guess I can see why. There's Tarot's assassination, and then there's what happens to the movie. He's just an unbearable, obnoxious idiot now, and it hurts my soul. Anyway, how is Megamind gonna stop Dude Monkey? Simple, really. He just has to become an influencer himself. Thank God stupid kid is here to do that for him. I don't know if I made this clear, but I hate this character so much. Such a bland and annoying insert for all the kids at home to relate to. She's cool, and she knows how to internet and stuff. She teaches Megamind about the internet, and he doesn't know anything. Not even what trolling is. Indian is laughing at a really old me. He even references Chocolate Rain! How do you do fellow kids? I would like for you some of the cringiest moments where Megamind tries to be hit, but I don't want this to potentially get copyright struck, and I also don't want to subject even my worst enemies yep. to that sort of thing. So the climax of the episode takes place at the Aquarium, a location we already saw in the movie. And the villain is trying to steal the fish, his Nighty Knight, a character we already saw in the movie. Because if the animation quality wasn't enough to tip you off that this is one of the cheapest DreamWorks adjacent productions of all time, the frequent reuse of locations and characters certainly will. Nighty Knight wipes the floor with the Turns out he was just faking all of those heists he stopped for you! 